Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all of the praises and the glory to the Most High and the Son. Yahweh Bashmi Awashah Bashmi Rukak Kwidash. And I just want to get right into this and making this a short video as well with this allegiance that uh, Charles III wants us to do right along with him, right? And, um, you know, the title of this video is going to be called Our Allegiance is going to Remain Towards Our Power. All right. Something to that equivalent anyway. That's where it's going to stay. You know, we're not going to pledge allegiance to a man, let alone a man which comes from an elk of people that has been hell bent and largely responsible for the downfall of our nation. Oh, no. So now let's begin by reading a few precepts in this regard over here. So this reads in the book of Psalms 30. 7 in verse 1 and, I'm, and the point is in verse 5 uh, fret not thy sub because of evil doers neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity which is what they are for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb and so shall they be uh, trust in the lord and do good and so shall thou dwell in the land and verily thou shalt be fed and delight thyself also in the lord and he shall give thee the desire of thine heart Commit thy ways unto the Lord and trust also in him that he shall bring it to pass. What the pass? That we be brought to the land, the land of Israel that is. And, and through that we will be redeemed. We will be delivered from the hands of our enemies. So this is what we expect as it is also written that the parish, excuse me, godly, is that the expectation of the poor will not perish. All right. As it is also written that there's no lie of the truth and the Lord is going to be a power that will fulfill his word. As what I'm saying now and as well as as it reads in the book of Numbers 23 and 19 and Isaiah 55 and verse 11. All right. So the words of the Lord are going to are going to come into full of to, into full of fruition. And in that we're going to be redeemed. We're going to be saved and we're going to be brought back to the Holy Land. And we're going to become a praise on the earth. So that's what's written. This is what the Lord is going to bring to pass. So we're going to be in line with what the Lord wants us to do. You know, our allegiance is with the Lord. Excuse me. So we're not going to be swearing no allegiance to no man, especially a man coming from the elk that has um, nothing for our people. All right. This man has not our interest at heart. He don't even have his own at heart. All right. So if they don't care about us. Why should we care about them? That's all I'm going to say with this right here. Going back to um, another priesthood that I want to bring as well. We're going to, we're going to read Romans eight and verse. What is it? 35. We're going to get to the point. Um, Who shall separate us from the love of the anointed and shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or in pearl or sword. As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as the sheep for the slaughter. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of the anointed, excuse me, the Most High, which is in the anointed Yahweh Shai, our Lord. So we're not going to allow some dirty, rotten, Satan worshiping individual to allow us to be divided from the Lord by us being fully persuaded to swear an allegiance to him. All right. He wants us to put trust in him because he's in the position that he's been given. Right. And he's the king and, and, what, and what have you. Right. So called anyway, because the real kings are behind him telling him what to do. I get bankers and stuff like that. Those that bear a powerful name, according to this world, that are fortunate. All right. So, like I said, man, we're not going to swear no allegiance to no to no man. We're going to keep our allegiance where, where it needs to be towards the Lord. All right. That's where that's where that's going to stay at. So now let's go and get the book of Chronicles up. Verse. Um, I 
I think it's in verse um yeah, verse 10. Now it is in mine heart. This is what Hezekiah, the king of Judah, said, which was a righteous king um, coming after King David. Now it is in mine heart to make a covenant with the Lord God of Israel that his fierce wrath may turn away from us. Exactly. So that's why also we stay in contact with the Lord. That's why we keep our covenant with the Lord. When we came into this truth, it was blood in and it's going to be blood out. So whether you we've noticed it or not, uh, when we came into this thing, we made a covenant that we're going to stick with it. Okay, so that's that's the deal, man. Nothing's going to allow us to depart from this word and this understanding. Just like what Paul said in Romans eight and thirty five onwards, and the sincere among us have all of this in our mind. We're we're fully persuaded that nothing. Where the powers, principalities, as Paul put it, will not separate us from this truth. All right. For the most part, the sincere among us will have this in mind. All right. Excuse me. So um, I think that's pretty much the point that I want to bring, man, is that our mind is set towards being in sync as we are men of Yahweh Bashmi Al Shai. To be in sync with him. Okay. And that's not going to change. That is not going to change. And we're not going to let some little sleaze bag. That's that's in, a, that's in a high position of power. To deter that. I'm out. Shalom.